Yo normalmente cultivo el tomate tipo cóctel y mi mayor problema con las plagas principalmente son la mosca blanca y la tuta absoluta. Tuta absoluta is a threat to tomato production worldwide. Tuta came around 2006 in Spain. Since 2009, people started to really heavily spray tuta absoluta with insecticides. And it's been already shown that those insecticides just don't work because tuta absoluta is resistant to uh, most of these active ingredients. However, we have solutions in biological control. So we have tuta absoluta, which entered uh, Spain in 2006. At that point, because it was exotic, there was no natural enemy that was able to feed or parasitize uh, tuta. But then, as time went on, there were native insects such as Necremnus tutae that adapted themselves so that they used tuta absoluta as a host. We learned how to uh, work with these parasitoids. It's a species that cannot easily be reared and not uh, be introduced artificially, but we found it always comes into every greenhouse. We have worked intensively in Almeria and we now have a very clear idea on how the protocol should be, how should you implement this, how should you get this wasp to control the pest. So the first thing that you have to know is how to recognize Necremnus tutai. So this is a typical damage caused by tuta absoluta larvae on the leaves. They build up galleries, they are feeding on the, on the leaves. So we will go and we will just collect leaves with uh, galleries, approximately 50, 60, and we will carefully open them up one by one and we will look into each one of these galleries to see what's going on. For instance, we can find a little egg or maybe some eggs nearby the corpse of a tuta larvae or we can find a little larvae feeding on top of the tuta larvae and that is the larva of uh, Necremnus. It's very easy to recognize once you have you get familiarized with it. Of course if you know that you have Necremnus in your farm you have to stop the use of insecticides. That's the first thing to do. Yo tenía muchas dudas porque si dejo de fumigar voy a tener más problemas, más problemas. Esa es la idea que tiene un agricultor que suele usar los químicos, que apoya toda su estrategia en los químicos. Y finalmente se puede comprobar que el ecosistema se regula por sí mismo, tiene tendencia a regularse de forma natural. But there are other things that are complementary to this. And for instance, we have these sex pheromones. This is a mating disruption technique and it will slow down the build up of the population of the pest. And uh, there are also other things such as, for instance, this plant, this is Lobularia maritima, it's a native plant, it produces resources that can be used by the wasp. With Tut Absoluti we have an excellent example on uh, something where we can show people how to change their way of working in the greenhouse in order to make it more profitable, to get to a better pest control and to, to, to meet with the objectives of spreading less. Lo que pasa es que nosotros cuando vemos tuta nos ponemos muy nerviosos y enseguida empezamos a atacarle con insecticida. Y lo que no te puedes poner es nervioso. Tienes que aguantar que haya un poquito y luego ya cuando tienes un poquito entonces ya mira a ver si hay. Y si hay, fuera insecticida. Biological control for most growers means that they will have to change their way of thinking and their way of working in the greenhouse. And they have to start to trust it. In the beginning they can hardly imagine that a small, tiny, little insect may control a pest that's all over the crop. They have to see it, you have to demonstrate it. And once they've seen it, it's very, very attractive because it's doing a far better job than uh, you will ever get done with a pesticide. Realmente para mí el trabajo que más odio aquí en el invernadero es el sulfata. Pues si me evito, si en vez de dar 10 sulfatas puedo dar 4, o pues muchísimo mejor. In biological control, we know that there's not a very powerful industry behind it. Nobody can patent natural enemies, nobody can sell them with a big margin. So, in this case, we see that the first interested party are the growers themselves. And they have to learn from each other. In nice words, it's called peer-to-peer -peer learning. And that's exactly what we need to get biological control working and spreading it out.